Oh, that you weren't expecting. Oh, yes. And you need wisdom for that. Yes. We want to accumulate wisdom on all subjects. Now, there's a reason why. Now, we're talking about being prepared ahead of time so that when you get confronted with a life situation, you will know how God wants you to see it and respond to it. Okay? Are, do you... Do you do you folks understand how simple it is to live this way? This is like, like, you know, there are things I don't ever have to decide because I already decided them. Does that make sense to you? That's what decisiveness is. Remember we learned that character calling. Decisiveness is the ability to finalize difficult decisions based on the words of God. When I have accumulated a sufficient bank of wisdom, and I'm not talking about theological platitudes here, I'm talking about a bank of wisdom that is directly applied to the real stuff of life. Right. When I've got that, and a circumstance comes up, I don't have to compute it all over again. I already got the answer. I'm prepared to deal with it. So we want to accumulate wisdom on all subjects. <clears throat> now this is the thing about Daniel and the Daniel school and the children. And whom there is no blemish, well favored, skillful of wisdom, cunning and knowledge, understanding, and such as had ability, had ability, now look at this, in them to stand. Not only did they know how to take a stand with their peers in the court, king's court, but they knew how to take a stand even if they were standing in front of the king. And why is this? They had the ability because they accumulated the wisdom of the prophets. So here we go. Get this wisdom and, and get this understanding. Now, there are two sources of getting this. Number one is the scriptures. From a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are, look at this now, able to make thee wise. And for those of you here, God bless you. You are blessed. You who are raised in homes where fathers and mothers are teaching you the scriptures from, and that's what, that's what Timothy, Timothy was raised by, and have a father, a mother and a grandmother. I don't know what happened to his father, but from a child, you knew the scriptures. And those scriptures are what are able to make you wise. Number one scriptures. Number two, you can request wisdom from God. Uh, we call that prayer. If you act, if any man, if any of you lack wisdom, let him, let him ask of God, and He promises that He will give it to you. Isn't that wonderful? Now, you do evaluate the type of response in each situation. The type of response. Now, there are different kinds of responses. I just kind of made these up. I, I could put, I probably could put biblical illustration to them, but we'd be here an extra hour, and I know that it's not necessary. <clears throat> some responses are emergency responses. There's sometimes when your response <coughs> to a given situation is indeed a matter of life and death. So, your ability to respond in a timely fashion and in an emergency situation is critical. That's why the preparation phase is so important. You've accumulated wisdom. And, 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 that's, and, and, and just to give you a really down-earthly kind of illustration of this, that's why most of us as children learn um, how to cross the street. 
Uh, red means stop, green means go, and yellow means watch out. And we stuck to practice that. That was responding to a traffic situation. But every area of life, there, sometimes there are emergency responses needed. Sometimes it's just an immediate response. A lot of issues in life require an immediate response. And let me tell you, the, the, the way to develop an immediate response is develop what I call an auto response, an automatic response. You don't have to go into a think mode, a study mode, a research mode. You're already prepared, you've got the wisdom, and, and it becomes rote. You just do it, just do it, you do it because you, and this is, this is how living the Christian life becomes easy because you develop the habit of making a choice based on the preparation you've done, on the wisdom that you've accumulated. So, look at this. Here's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is the heathen names of these three Hebrew boys. They answered, and this is what they said to the king. Look at this. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Now these boys are being threatened with being thrown into a fire and burned at the stake, so to speak. Only it was a furnace instead of a stake. They did not have to compute all the details. They were asked to compromise. All you've got to do, all you've got to do is when you hear the music, dance. Crew, get in the, do what we do. Fall down. Give in to the music. Worship. And these three Hooper boys look at the king, the king now. Now to say no to your neighbor is one thing, saying no to the king is another. To say no to a king that has just said that if you don't do our stuff, sing to our music and dance with us and drink our wine and date our women, if you don't fit in, we're going to burn you. It's the king saying that. And these boys had such ability to respond. It didn't require thinking didn't require contemplating the consequences. They just had an immediate ability to respond the right way. And they were able to say, King, well, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. We will not bow. We will not bend. We got to get to you, folks. Because it seems like within our culture that almost at every turn of the road we've got somebody trying to take us away the wrong route. Sometimes the enemy even comes from within you. You find enemies in the strangest places. And at that moment, an auto response. Because you pre-figured it out. Sorry, King. Can't do that. Not because no fear of losing popularity. There just are no other factors that can be allowed to interfere with wisdom. So we're not careful to answer in this manner. <clears throat> now sometimes responses, I use the word surgical, implying you know, a, a situation can be somewhat complex and it requires precision. It's not, I mean, there's no one thing. It may be you have to apply a wisdom here and another wisdom and this, and, and, and so you surgically apply wisdom. That's why you want to be careful not just to react, but and then there's uh, calculated responses. Sometimes if you get time and you don't, if you've never thought something through, don't be afraid to say to somebody, hey, listen, let me think about it, I'll get back to you. Then you go seek the wisdom out and then you come back and you deliver the facts, you deliver the goods. 
and you, you, you do a, a new research because of something you haven't encountered or you weren't prepared for. So here's the big one. <clears throat> this is what's really wonderful. When we function in wisdom, we, by that wisdom, qualify God to get involved. And this, my friends, is totally wonderful. I'm going to take you quickly through the scripture to get down to the bottom part of it. Samuel spake to the whole house of Israel. Return to the Lord with all your hearts. Put away the strange gods. Look at this. Prepare your hearts unto the Lord to do what he says only. Now watch what happens. And he will deliver you out of the hand of those times. God gets involved with people who follow wisdom. Yes, amen. You need to get this. God will not back foolishness. God will not endorse folly. God will not support evil. God will not energize wrong directions. But he is not only ready, but willing. He is zealous to get involved in our lives. And what determines whether, is simply this, and what is what I am doing endorsable by God? And if it is, God is going to be there, given his input, his energy, his help. Wow, this is so good. God responds and is qualified because he's not going to do something that's not wise. He is not going to endorse stupidity. But somebody who's operating, was if you prepare your hearts, he will deliver you out of the land of Israel. Look at this. God is able to make, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you will have all sufficiency in all things. And so that you may abound. I mean, now we got God involved in the story. Now God is here. And that is ultimately, because you remember the scripture that says that God is able to make you stand. Do you remember in Ephesians 5 where it says you will be able to withstand all the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Able. Able to do it. Able to do it. Developing the ability to respond to all of life's situations. Now, if you go to the back page, I want you to use that back page. You can start off like this. Search your memory for times when you got caught off guard, didn't know how to respond. Write it down. There may be a couple of dozen of those. I got a few of my own. <laughs> a dozen, that is. Take a look around at what young people are having to face today in this culture. Because if they're facing it, you'll have to. Write it in there. And then start matching the wisdom on how to respond if you ever get in those situations. Sometimes they'll come up totally unexpectedly. But when they do, you won't have to react. You won't get caught off guard. You'll have the ability to respond. And if we respond to wisdom, God kicks in as well. And that's, I, I wish now that I hadn't, I have about eight other scriptures I was going to bring you on. God making you able. Don't ever forget the God factor. 
He is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory. He's able to keep you. So you're not in it alone, but you are in it. Let us learn. Now the day is coming ahead. So it's not going to get easier. It's going to get tougher. In your notes, did I give you anything from Ezekiel chapter 38? I don't think I did. Oh yeah, let's go back to that verse. 38. So let me go back there just for a second because this is uh, a long way back, right? Point four. I don't want it back. <laughs> yeah. Remember the scripture? Be thou prepared. Prepare yourself. And all the company that's, that's assembled unto you, family, friends, friends, a sphere of influence, and be a guard unto them. I want you not to miss this. Ezekiel chapter 38 is about today. It opens up the battle of Gog and, Gog and Magog. The whole Russia story. China. 38th chapter is the prophetic chapter in Ezekiel that has reference to today. So I, I want to put that, I just want to get this scripture to you in the sense that that in fact uh, it's for us right now. Boy, don't you wish the preacher could preach that fast? I really hope that's been helpful to you today. You got homework to do, don't you? You have to do it. I, I, I don't know why I'm compelled to say this, but I gotta say this. You're not just doing it for you. You're doing it for your children. You're doing it for your grandchildren. You are setting up the foundation for generations to come. Generations that will not just make it through by the skin of their teeth, but will conquer and be triumphant. Because you prepared them on how to have the ability to respond to the stuff that they are going to face. Take the job seriously, friends. It's not only your soul, it's the souls of your friends that are sick. Let's each of us become trainers of others in the wisdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father.